If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of the Mind Pump, of course we talk all about fitness, health, building muscle, burning body fat, and improving your physical you know fitness. all that jazz. But we also talk about current events, our lives, and we have a lot of fun. So here's what we talked about in the first 46 minutes of this episode where we talked about current events. I talked about my grandfather's 88th birthday. That was a good time. And how my uh, family members, who are all investors, are now using lion's mane to make them sharper so they can make more money. That's true. True Smart. story. Now, the best lion's mane that I found comes from Four Sigmatic. Four Sigmatic is one of our sponsors. If you go to Four Sigmatic, that's F-O-U-R- S I G M A T I C dot com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump at checkout, you'll get 15% off. Then we talked about how some countries are talking about taxing beef. What won't they tax? How dare you? Yeah, they want to raise money on beef. Apparently, it's bad for Lay the off my beef. Dumb. Then I talked about a study, uh, no, sorry, how Harvard Medical School is going to get four and a half million dollars specifically for cannabinoid research. So we talked all about cannabinoids and their potential effects on the body. Now, our favorite source of natural, legal cannabinoids is from NED. They make full-spectrum hemp oil extract. So it's got all the cannabinoids in it, not just CBD. They are one of our sponsors. If you go to Hello Ned, that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then we talk about how fatherhood, fatherhood changes men's brains. There's actually studies that show that a man's brain changes after he becomes a father. Adam gives us some baby updates. <laughs> I talked about how Disney World almost went nuclear. True story. Uh, we talked about the winning the car at the mall scam. Apparently it's a scam. Nobody ever wins a car. Don't do it. Um, and then we get into the fitness portion of this episode. The first question, this person wants to know what our favorite row variations are for strength, hypertrophy, and performance. There's a lot of different rows that you can do out there. Which ones are our favorites? The boat row. The next question, this person wants to know, what are the characteristics or qualities that separates people who are super consistent long-term with their fitness programs and people who stop their workout programs? People are inconsistent. So what are the differences? What makes people consistent long-term? The next question, we talk all about sleep hacks. So what are some good sleep hacks on a budget to improve your sleep quality um, and get all the health benefits that come from getting better sleep? And the final question, this person's been seeing a lot of these all-in posts on Instagram. These are fitness influencers who are going all-in, in quotation marks, um, and just eating crazy amounts of food to, quote, make themselves healthy. We give our opinion on that in that part of this episode. Sounds suspect. Also, this month... Maps Prime and Prime Pro are both half off, 50% off. This is our first time ever running this kind of a promotion. Now, Maps Prime is a program that gets you to individualize your warm-up or your priming session before your workout. So you get this program, you take a few tests, then you figure out what your priming session should be. Now, why is that important? Well, if you prime your body properly, your current workout will become much more effective because you'll be activating muscles more effectively. You'll be increasing your functional range of motion, which of course causes better results. You'll move better. You'll get your muscles to fire in better ways. It just makes your current workout that much better. Now, MAPS Prime Pro is correctional in nature. It's our correctional exercise program. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you have aches or pains or you want to improve your movement, you can get this program, look at all the major joints in the body, follow some of the movements, and achieve better, greater ranges of motion, better muscle activation, less pain, and less injury, uh, and less chances for injury. Both those programs half off. Just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code PRIME50. That's P-R-I-M-E-5-0 for the discount. T-shirt time! And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Wow. Wow, He's back you. from the dead. <laughs> so we have two winners for iTunes and two for Facebook. The iTunes winners are Mono Molly and Big D Energy Brian. Hey. For Facebook, we have Melissa Hicks and Roxanne Mestre. 
All of you are winners. Send the names I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and your Instagram handle, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. So yesterday was my grandfather's uh, 88th birthday. 88. Wow. 88 years what do you old. do for an 88 birthday? Uh, well, we had you know strippers. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just uh, you know it's funny. So if you're a good grandson. We, yeah. Uh, hey, no, no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Straight heart attack. <laughs> yeah, no. no, we um uh we went up to my aunt's house because she hosted his birthday party, and I would say probably. Of the people that live in the Bay Area, Sacramento area, probably one third of my family showed up. Did you guys see the pictures in the video? Oh, there's a ton of people there. Yeah, I so I'm I, I show up and you know Jessica's starting to get used to now my family functions, but we have other new family members that have come into the family who are who are dating. <laughs> Poor my, girl. So every time uh, every time there's ten new people for her. Well, no, no, that's not what it is. We have uh, like my cousin. It is that way for her too, though. I know it is. I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. That's... But my cousins like in, just got engaged, and my other cousins dating someone, and so these are new girls that are coming in. My sister has a boyfriend that she's been dating. They for They gotta while. learn all this the stuff. Yeah. So I hear them. We all have this conversation about because then on the way home, I'm driving home my cousin and her boyfriend, and Jessica and my cousin's boyfriend, who are both obviously outside of the family coming in, start talking about what it's like to come to our family functions. So if you you saw my, if you go on my Insta story, you'll see the line for food, which went through my aunt's entire house. <laughs> it, it literally went through my aunt's whole house, and, I, and then there was a big picture at the end with my grandfather and everybody that showed up. And it's just I think we probably had. I don't know, 70 people, 60, wow, 70, 70 people. Wow, so crazy. Yeah, it's just an insane amount of people. And, and they were talking about the noise and all the different people and how you have to say hi to everybody. You got to say bye to everybody. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just used to it. But it's funny, when I, when I post the video, people are, are commenting and they're like, dude, that's insane. I'm like, it, that's like a third. Yeah. That's not everybody. This because, is like yeah. Katrina's family. And it's so, it's uh, as the partner, that's why I feel for Jess, totally. Like, I totally uh, feel for her because here I am, I'm approaching... We're going to hit nine years this year, right? So we're coming up, Katrina and I, November-ish. We're coming up on nine years. <laughs> you know the date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like the idea of ish? <laughs> November-ish. <laughs> Sometimes you a little wiggle room. Yeah. yeah. It's Somewhere just a case. That, yeah. Yeah. It's more than you know, six years. Yeah. Less than ten. yeah. <laughs> Depending on how you count. You know, like, so, so yeah, coming around this uh, November, so we'll hit nine. And I think... I'm just, I could probably score a 90% on a test if we had all the pictures of the family members and I had all the names on the side and I could pair them like that. I think I'm just now probably at a point where I could score 90%, but I still don't even think I could ace the test if I had to like name every. Well, how many people come to functions? Like, would you say number wise when you go to a big function? When, it, when a big family function, like, so like, what, and it, her family is like yours, where they get together for almost anything, right? So mm -hmm. I would consider like an 88 birthday would be a yeah, big a decent function. one, right? Yeah, that's a big function for them, or like a major graduation, like like um, when they're they're uh, you know uh, Jasmine graduated from uh, Santa Clara College, like that was I don't know probably about 120 people. Oh or so. yeah, so you guys they and it's all it like family and cousins. Uh -huh. It's not friends. This is all everyone is fucking somehow related, you know. And so mm -hmm. and it just every time I go to a new one, it's like. You know, a new part of a family that I didn't realize. Oh no, that's uh, you know, so and so's wife, and they were you know together yeah, yeah. before, and they you know had two, do you, three do you kids. Do this thing where you're like, hey, it's nice to meet you. You're not uh, very nice to meet you. And they're like, we met last time. Yes, uh, happens to all the time, <laughs> all the time. I knew that yeah, all the time. No, my my grandfather does this thing now uh, because he's you know he's older. He's 88 years old. Good health though. Uh, he's a he's, he's strong like a like a horse, um, but he's getting up there in age. So now every time we have a big family function, he's always like, hey. Hey, get all the boys together. Come here. And then we all have to take a big picture. He goes, this is the last picture we'll all take together. Every time he says that. <laughs> Every time. They're all dramatic about it. And then it. he does yeah. this rem this weird reminiscing thing like, you know, it's going to be when I die, you guys are all going to fight over who gets to carry my casket. I'm like, no, no. What the f <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible thing I to think it. about. <laughs> oh, what are you man. doing? You yeah. know? But he does this thing like, this is the last time we're going to. Anyway, I have a lot of family members that are um, investors. And actually, uh, all the guys in my age group are in that space or either professionally or it's like their favorite hobby. Like even my cousins who, you know, I have a cousin that is, uh, he's in the tech space um, and he's actually a big shot in this big company, but he loves it too. So when we all get together, it ends up turning into this like, 
you know, how you invest and what you're going to buy and where you're going to put your money. And that's cool. I like that conversation too, but I get kind of bored of it for a little while. So I'm like trying to throw in my whole thing. So I'm like, hey, you guys ever use like nootropics and stuff for, <laughs> to help you guys like <laughs> pick? And they all got excited, right? Because they're like, yeah, what, like what's good? Like I drink coffee, I fast, this and that. Uh. So I'm like, lion's mane. You're over here pitching four sigmatic on him. <laughs> 100%. I could just, dude, I could just see your ass doing 100%. that. <laughs> no, so here's what, opportunity. No, so here's what, what was kind of cool. I started talking about lion's mane and how, you know, especially when you combine it with caffeine or even on its own, how it's been shown to improve, uh, you know, mental function and health or whatever. Well, anyway, one of my cousins is like, oh, dude, he goes, me and a couple of my other investor buddies, that's the main supplement that we take. Oh, did wow. not even know. Oh, that's interesting. That they took, yeah, lion's mane. Now, did you ask him if they're, are, did, did you tell them that we have Four Sigmatic or so are they taking something else? They take Four Sigmatic. Oh, they do. Yes, but here's the infuriating part. What? You think they use our code? Like that? <laughs> so oh. you're not getting no credit for yeah, it. Yeah, so you know what Come I did? Come on, guys. Yeah. He had just ordered some, right? Yeah. I took his phone and I said, let me see your phone. And I emailed uh, for Sigmatic from his phone. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm a huge mind pump fan. <laughs> I forgot to use the code. That's Please, perfect. you fuckers. I forgot that that's a big thing in Silicon Valley. Like, even just, uh, like, just, I mean, you're in the tech world. Like, there's a lot of people that are into nootropics still. Oh, it's, a, it's a big, it's a big thing. I mean, Silicon Valley is what started the whole nootropics really took off here. Anything that improves mental function, the use of uh, you know illicit substances, even like microdosing LSD right, and stuff right. like that, was big in in Silicon Valley. But he was telling me that Lion's Mane is the new. That's the big one that a lot of guys are using now to help them be, because these guys are when they're trading, it's a game, man. They're sitting there. I've shown you guys yeah, pictures. Hyper focused, dude. I've yeah. shown you guys pictures. Yeah. My 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 it's brother's like matrix screens. dude. My brother's desk has yeah. five computer screens. Yeah, and it looks like like the Matrix. Remember when they're looking at the computer screen and he, he's like, "Oh, I yeah. can see what's going on." I don't on understand here. any of it. Yeah, it looks like a bunch of lines and dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what they're looking at. It's yeah. freaking crazy. Anyway, oh, d- yeah. hey, did you get a chance to answer? I saw this on uh, Rob Wolf. Now is posted about it, um, and I also saw our good buddy Brendan had uh, commented on one of our last episodes. He really enjoyed uh, the conversation that we had around the Impossible Burger, and. You know, one of the things to the article that just came out, there's an article that just came out about uh, them potentially trying to tax beef, right, to discourage people from buying red meat. uh, And the angle is the environmental angle, which is also the same angle that Brendan was also saying that we forgot to mention on the last podcast. And I told him, I said, you know, I thought I could have sworn that, Sal, you addressed this before, or I don't know if this is an off-air conversation that we were having with one of our other friends. But I've been told that that's been debunked. Yeah, it's hard to filter out propaganda with like real solid statistics, you know, around this subject. I don't know it's, where, where to even go. It's for that. so oversimplified. Well, two things. First off, they any excuse to add a tax, if they see that there's public support behind a cause of some sort, then they can and they can attach a tax to it. Um, they will because it's a great way for them to make money. Right. So taxing red meat because it's good for the environment, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. They just want to get more of your money. That's not, that's not what, in fact, taxing red meat, uh, sounds better than taxing you for your gas usage. People get pissed off at that, but they're like, we're going to tax red meat. And then you're going to be like, Oh yeah, we know it's poor animals and we need to eat less red meat and it's better. Thing. No, it's bullshit. Just a way to raise taxes. As far as the environmental concerns are, 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 are concerned. Um, they don't, you have to look at the whole big picture. What they do is they look at a very small part of the picture and say, oh, there's less of a carbon footprint here. Therefore, it's better for the environment. It's not true. you got to look at the whole picture. And economists and stati- you know, uh, mathematicians who've actually looked at the entire thing find that at most you're looking at a few percent uh, you know, reduction in carbon output. But what they don't factor in is this, and this is a big one. Now, my expertise is in, in fitness and health. Okay, The average person is completely ignorant when it comes to nutrition and diet. Would you guys not agree? Right, right. The average person is ignorant when it comes to diet. If you're going to start pushing this agenda of going vegan because it's good for the environment and you have all these average people who don't even pay attention to nutrition to begin with, now we're like, well, I'm just going to eat only vegan products. It's good for the environment. You're going to end up with a lot of nutrient deficiencies and health, health problems because a vegan diet, if it's going to be done healthy, and if it's going to be long term and improve longevity and be healthy, it has to be very well planned. You have to have a very well planned vegan diet. Vegans who are long term vegans know this. 
you, if we get one on the podcast, I'll admit, you don't just go vegan, you're going to end up having a shit ton of nutrient deficiencies. And so think of the cost that's going to have on medical costs, our health costs, and society, and how much of a strain is that going to be on the environment and the economy. But they don't even look at that. They just look at the perfect vegan diet versus the average American diet. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's well, not did, how it will did, work. Didn't they even break down like the, you know the gases that are emitted from the cows and all that, and they compared it to, okay, that let's say that produces X amount of meat that would produce X amount of burgers. Now let's do this burger that is all made from you know all these other random weird things, right? Mm -hmm. Vegetables and shit like that. That's all inside this. How many fields would have to be tilled? How many tractors? That's would have when to you look at the whole picture. That's what I'm saying. Like, yes. didn't they do this where they figured that out and they go like, well, when you factor in how many more fields that you would have to till to produce that many burgers that would replace real meat and the tractors that drove to do that, the animals, the insects, the things that were killed in order to create that, you're talking about, you know, literally splitting hairs on the difference on which one's better for the environment. And, and again, we have to consider this. The most important thing to understand and consider is what are the health costs that are gonna that people are gonna have. Now I'm not talking because you can't compare a well planned vegan diet to the average American diet. That's not apples to apples. The average American diet, if if a person who follows that diet who's no, who's ignorant to nutrition switches to vegan, they're gonna be worse because now they're going to have nutrient deficiencies. Because the truth is, the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. I've seen are, this too. Are, are, my, are meats. I watched my yeah. cousin switch over because of that what the health documentary. Like I hadn't seen her since that. I come. We're eating dinner one. It was like actually Thanksgiving the year before or whatever. And you know she has become you know a, a vegan out of nowhere. And I'm just like, huh? Mm -hmm. And it was all because of the documentary. So she's just not choosing meat. But then she's not also planning her day on what she should be consuming and eating. And then she ends up having this iron deficiency later on. It's like, well, there you go. Like, and how expensive would that be? What that, what's that? Right. Cost it's like to us? it's not it's not that easy. You just don't just cut meat out and you're okay. You're you're cutting out one of the most nutrient dense foods in your diet. And if you're not somebody who's willing to put the work in. And figure out, oh, okay, now that I'm, it's and it's not as simple as just protein. Everybody thinks it's that. No. It's, not, it's not just a protein. No, there's argument. nutrients that are that are essential that are largely uh, found, mostly, and some almost only found in animal products and meat. In fact, even smart, well-planned vegans, oftentimes when they've been vegan long enough, oftentimes still have to supplement. They still have to add supplements or eat vegan foods that are heavily fortified. With, uh, with vitamins and minerals, with certain vitamins and minerals. So this is a real a real situation. I mean, the truth is veganism would not even exist if we didn't have modern farming and, and the ability to go to the grocery store and have tons and tons of variety. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying don't go vegan. I'm just saying if you go vegan, first off, you better know what the fuck you're doing because just going vegan, I can 100% guarantee you're going to end up with a nutrient deficiency over time, right. mess up your hormones, have terrible health, and look, there's bad health that comes from just eating a bad diet. And then there's bad health that comes from a nutrient deficiency. Which one do you think is more acute? You know what I mean? You right. deal with like a, 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 you know, a vitamin B deficiency or an iron deficiency um, or a vitamin D deficiency or whatever. That's like acute. You know what I mean? You can get away with kind of eating a shitty typical American diet for 15, 20 years. You have a nutrient deficiency. Hair falls out. Nails start to get all weird. Hormones are all over the place. You lose your period. You're a man, you're not producing sperm anymore, testosterone drops, like all kinds of things happen. So you got to have be well planned. So you're going to tell a bunch of average, you know, American dieters or eaters or whatever, hey, everybody who do, you don't know anything about nutrition to begin with, now stop eating meat because it's better for the environment. And you sell them on that. Mm. And you have all these food manufacturers that are processing vegan foods so that they, they taste good. So now they have no excuse. They're like, well, the Impossible Burger tastes just like meat. I heard it's better than the environment. Well, vegetable farms aren't good for the environment either. No, no. It, I mean, there, there's always an impact, and again, if you count all of it out, there's there. It's not. It's not. Max um, Lugavere is fielding this right now too. I yeah. mean, this is Max is taking on an onslaught right now. Rob is taking an onslaught right now. It's this thing is growing. It's getting legs like crazy. As far as like everybody is jumping on the bandwagon with this Impossible Burger, it's it's insane, dude. Yeah. Smart investment. You want to make some money because it's fucking winning right now. <clears throat> it's blowing my mind though how many people are being fucking fooled. If by you it. make something that tastes really really good and you sell the the notion that it's better. Yeah, like cruelty-free. Yeah, like it's better for the environment, you're not killing any animals, and it's better for your body, but it also tastes really fucking good. You've got everything covered. Right. you got a blockbuster right there. I don't care what your product is. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, it's crazy. Oh, here's here's something interesting. 
Um, I just read this the other day. So apparently this happened this year. Harvard Medical School got a four and a half million dollar, I think, grant to study specifically to study uh, cannabinoids. What? Yeah. So very cool. So ju- they're going to use this money specifically just to study cannabinoids, and in particular their applications for health. And they're also going to study why cannabinoids, and in particular THC, might have a negative effect on the adolescent brain. Because there's some studies that show mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. when kids use a lot of THC, that they have a permanent uh, reduction in their IQ and they increase their risk of uh, uh, mental disorders like now, schizophrenia. Now, what, what are your thoughts right now? I, I'm seeing this more and more in our space. And we have friends that are connected to us that are uh, speaking out on cannabis. And I, I understand because I, I think we've talked out on it a, a few times, too, that it's turning into... Uh, you know, everybody's pixie dusting, you know, uh, cannabis and every product that's out there. And and I don't know, I feel like they're doing more harm than they are good, right? Because now what's happening is now it's turning into this debate of, you know, is CBD worth anything at all? Or is it just it's the next, you know, mm. bullshit supplement that's out there that are, that's got way more hype than what it's really doing as far as benefits to people. And there's, there's some people in the space that are shitting on it. And then there's uh, other people in the space that are promoting it for everything, you know. And so, mm. you know, what are your thoughts on where this is going to go? Do you think that it's going to continue to be something that is used by the masses? Do you think it's going to be for specific people only? Like, what do you foresee? I th- well, CBD as of right now has some actual medicinal applications, but they're not super numerous. <clears throat> so. We have yet to see studies that show that CBD does everything that all these people promise, like post-workout recovery and, you know, does this for sleep and does this for that. We don't have any evidence to support that. For I think the bubble's still going to blow up, though. I don't think it's going to pop. It's going to keep growing because CBD is connected to cannabis. Cannabis is becoming more and more legal. It sounds cool, so they're putting in everything, ice cream and burgers and mm. whatever. The, the, the science that we currently have, though, shows that cannabinoids are better when they're all present. So if you want to get the the anxiolytic effects, for example, of cannabinoids, it's better to take uh, to use something that's an extract from the plant, whether it be cannabis or hemp, because the cannabinoids seem to work better together. They call it the entourage effect. In fact, if this is something you're interested in, you can actually Google cannabinoid entourage effect, and you'll see that if they compare individual cannabinoids to cannabinoids in the presence of other cannabinoids, um, for whatever they're, ca- they're comparing them to, whether it's even THC, even the Ill- illegal cannabinoid, uh, the federally illegal one, THC, THC makes you high, makes you a f- you can make you feel euphoric and, and giggly and all that stuff. If you combine THC with other cannabinoids, it improves all those effects and it, and it reduces all the negative effects. It's <clears throat> so like paranoia, short-term memory loss effects. Those all decline because CBD, CBG, CBC, you know, and all the other myriad of cannabinoids are, are present. And there's a lot of them. I, there's a, uh, there's, I, I know of at least a dozen, but there's more. There's also benefits that come from the, and this is both the hemp plant and the cannabis plant, the marijuana plant. There's also benefits that come from the terpenes that are found in these plants. Mm-hmm. And the terpenes are what give the, the, the plants <clears throat> their smell. So like, um, and you, if you go, well, this to a, is what turned us on to dosis. I remember that yeah, I remember that was that. one of the things, cause they're one of the few companies that we saw that were even messing with talking about the terpenes. Yeah. So like if you, so like when you go to a, a, a cannabis shop, um, and it, you know, you open up the little jars and you smell them and some of them will smell like skunk. Mm-hmm. Some of them smell like pine or diesel gasoline or like a fruity kind of smell. All, all those smells come from terpenes. And what they're finding is that the terpenes, change how your body uses the cannabinoids and they may actually play a bigger role than we thought. So if you're going to use cannabinoids uh, and you're going to use them in ways that are therapeutic, um, first off, uh, I would stay away from THC unless the THC is, is, is what's helping you. So unless you're like depressed and you need it for those types of things. But I would stay from with, stick with the ones that don't have THC, hemp oil extracts, or like this, and then use full he- full extracts because they com- they have all that stuff. They have the terpenes. They have the what they basically do. Like Ned, for example, that's a company we work with. Ned takes takes these hemp plants and basically can extracts use a full uh, spectrum extract and condenses them down. So when you use a dropper dropper full, 
you're getting uh, a lot of all the cannabinoids and the terpenes. And you can actually smell when you open the bottle. Yeah. You can smell it that there's- smells like it. Exactly. And that's where you're going to get the benefit. So so that's why we'll get messages where people will be like, I used CBD and it didn't do anything for me. Yeah. But then I used uh, hemp, the, the NED hemp oil extract and then I felt a big difference. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you brought this up, especially like with, you know, child development and, and the brain development and then the exposure of, you know, THC and a lot of these, uh, you know, chemicals from marijuana. I was actually wondering about this, if there's like a study for secondhand smoke, you know, around children, uh, you know, with cannabis, like if they're even like moving in that direction, I think I, I honestly, like I was having a hard time with this because I was, you know, on vacation and, you know, it's legal now. And so it's like, people are getting very like, like laissez faire about like how they use their cannabis. And there's, there's this family of this, this, this guy and his, his girl, and they have this little toddler and he's just like smoking, you know, and all this smoke is going on his kid. And it's like right in front of me. And I'm just, it just not sit well with me. No, that doesn't see, it seems extremely irresponsible if you ask me. Yeah. That's the way they used to, that's the way they used to smoke um, cannabis in the ancient times is they would, they wouldn't smoke it. They would, they would, they would put themselves in teepee. And then they burn it inside the, the tent, and then they all just breathe in. It's the same smoke. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? The right. baby's not inhaling it from the joint, but it's probably getting it, some. To me, it felt, okay, th- this is a comp- comparison that I was kind of looking at. I'm like, yeah, it'd be one thing if he had, like, a beer, and, like, he's, like, kind of drinking it. But it'd be, like, the equivalent of, like, Jack Daniel's bottle. Like, he's just down in, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what it looked like and felt like. Well, I mean, the smoke is going to the kid. Right. The, and, it, and it does interfere with the way the brain uh, develops. So this is why they're saying, you know, if you're going to use – uh, especially the, the the psychoactive cannabinoids like like THC, you don't want to use it until you're like in your 20s when your brain is already solidified and then you're going to be okay. Yeah. Otherwise, if you affect the way it develops, there's a lot of plasticity in the brain when you're young, but then once you get to a certain point, it's kind of structured and that's it. Speaking of brain, you sent me over an article about uh, fatherhood changing my brain. I didn't get a chance to read oh, it. Right. You have to break it down to me. Yeah, it, dude, you, let me pull it up. Yeah, you sent it over so to me. So it did it. talk about, there's two things that they noticed that happens with uh, fathers when they have kids. Um, one is that they notice a decline in testosterone. Now, they theorize that the, that the lower testosterone is because it keeps the father, it makes the dad less likely to want to stray, more parental, you know, you know, wanted to be more of a, you know, a, a, a role in raising the child. I don't think that's the reason at all. I think if you take out the lack of sleep factor and stress, yeah. that their testosterone levels are will be perfectly fine because that's the one thing that they're not counting for. Like, well, you could totally tease mm-hmm. that out. You could tease that out from a, a father who just had a kid who's uh, involved with his kid versus the dad who had a kid and then completely disconnected and goes about his normal life, like you would think that that would be proven through that, right? No, yeah. No, what they do is they just test men's testosterone, you know, before and then after they have a kid. And, I mean, you know, when you first have a kid, you're not sleeping well. Even if you are sleeping well, you've got something new on your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, automatically you're thinking of more than just you. I got to bust my eye. I got to work. I got to, oh, my God, I got to pay these bills. That's going to lower your testosterone. So that part right there, um, that's not not clear yet. Mm. Um, But the brain does seem to change. So what they found, so with moms, um, there's parts of the brain that are linked to attachment, nurturing, empathy, and the ability to <laughs> interpret and react appropriately to a baby's behavior. That starts to improve um, in, uh, in, in moms um, and in dads. Um, so it's interesting how our brains start to kind of change a little bit so that we can you know, become better parents, if you will, if we can nurture our children a little bit better. There's also a part of the brain that also starts to develop uh, more or shows up more brightly on their scans with men. And this is the outer surface of the brain where higher, more conscious cognitive functions sit, like thought, goal orientation, planning, and problem solving. Oh, yeah. Now, that that makes a lot of sense, right? Evolutionarily yeah. speaking. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're, you, you have a baby and you're about to... You know, you gotta you gotta get smarter with your planning and your your goal setting and all that shit. So my right. business brain should be next level right now. Is what yeah. you're saying right now? <laughs> well, are you noticing any changes? Ride right the wave. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like most of the brilliant ideas we've been doing lately, I think, have been coming from me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what though? You, I, I've noticed with you, you you're you're much more. Um, uh, you seem happier and calm. I don't know if that's just yeah, probably because you have. a Baby. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm tired as fuck, though. I'll give you that Is that one. what it is? Yeah, I'll give you that one. You got to tire you yeah, out a little yeah, bit. No, I'll, give, I'll give you that. I submit. You know what I'm saying? I was talking a lot of shit the first four days. 
And, uh, <laughs> you know, this is easy. Yeah. Yeah. I we was, got this on record. I was, I was talking mad shit at the very beginning. I was like, oh, this ain't so bad. You know, it's funny. What I realize now looking back, cause um, here I am on week six is, uh, a lot of that, it must be adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Like of, course, of excitement, yeah. like cortisol. Totally. Yeah, I mean, in and to an because I didn't think I thought that you know that that seems to be like a or my experience before. Uh, normally, when I have adrenaline like that, it's like a twenty four hour, forty eight hour thing. But you know, having a child just goes to show that like that it, it was a much lo- longer lasting high. Like I was the first week to two weeks to me was like nothing. fire. You're yeah, on fire. nothing. Yeah, I was training hard. Wasn't sleeping. Didn't feel like I was deprived of sleep. Like this is, I got this, you know. Yeah. And it, you know, and I know you guys kept talking shit that it's it's coming, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. And it came. You know, what I'm saying it definitely came. It came. It came. And I'm like, fuck, I'm tired right yeah, now. Right. Uh, it's I was all sleep- right, man. It's so like- I'm I was sleeping on my bottom floor this morning. Right. So what? Here's the, the latest news. Right. This, you guys are gonna love this. So you guys know how I like to keep my house like just fucking arctic cold right i like to, i like to keep it like 51 like get to wear a jacket in the summertime oh, in my no, house you already have to lift that up well so you know we are st- for a little while there we, we were starting to have a little tr- a problem with maximus he was just kind of getting kind of congested and a runny nose and that was making him have a hard time breathing and and even when he was nursing and you know we were doing all these different things to troubleshoot it and, you know, something that we started to notice is like, man, he really likes to be in front of the red light. He really likes when we go outside in the sun. So he loves, and we or the steam in the, in, in the room, we'd steam up the, our, our spare bathroom and get it real hot. And like, he seems to calm down when it gets really, really kind of humid and hot. And I thought, fuck, we keep the room, <laughs> the, the house dry and cold, you know? And like, what happens if we like turn it up like kind of tropical, let it get warm to like 73 in the house or whatever? And it was, it's sure as shit. We turn it up to like 73 and he's like so much better. Breathing better, sleeping better, nursing better. And I'm like, fuck. Oh no. And I'm dying, bro. (laughs) I'm just like so hot, dude. And so thank God for the chili pad to like save me. But even then, dude, like last night I woke up and and I told Katrina, I'm like, I got to go downstairs. And I like went all the way down to our bottom floor and because down there it's actually pretty cool. Like if I keep my house at seventy three, the 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 third floor, the bottom, the lowest floor is stays pretty cool, you know, because the heat rises, right? So I go down there and and I slept on this on our uncomfortable. That's like the staged room, you know, like the family room that nobody ever sits in. It's not it's not the comfortable couch. <laughs> so I was sleeping on that last night. Like fuck, dude, this is not cool. Man. It keeps keeps coming. Yeah. So I <laughs> there's one thing. Yeah. So I definitely will admit that 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 part has uh, the the sleep thing. And I you know I didn't realize how long that this you know, two hour, hour and a half, two hour eating thing would last. Like I just assumed for some reason, I thought that was a very small time. I thought it was the first two weeks for a newborn. And then they kind of transitioned to like the, you know, four hour to six hour. <laughs> like it's, it's on like, bro, a, it's a long time, bro. Yeah. He's going to be eating like that for a little while. No, yeah. I know. I've actually, yeah. I mean, obviously I recognize that now that, cause what, what'll happen is she'll, she'll nurse and the the two hour and this is the part that I guess I just you got to feel bad for her too because she's got the foods attached to her. Well, that's the other part. Yeah. So this is the part two. I told her just yes, yesterday. I said, you know, I, I really want you to consider, um, you know, hiring a, a full time nanny to come over. And really, it's 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 more to make me feel better about like because what's happening now is I'm tired because I didn't sleep. Then I work now, and I'm trying to and I'm still trying to stay consistent with training. And so when I get home, I'm pretty fucking exhausted. I'm not the, the the dad in the first week who's like excited to take him from her and handling him most of the time, like and right. doing a lot of it. Like I'm fucking tired. And then I can see that she's tired because she's been handling him all day and all night. And so there's a part of me that's like, man, I don't, I feel bad for her. I feel bad for myself because where I'm at. And I'm like, and I don't want that. And so, and I know like right now we have my sister back again, right? So she's with us for a week. And it's like, man, when she comes, she was here, she got here yesterday. And Katrina looked at looked at her like the savior. She's yeah, yeah. She's like, man, your brother just loves when here because my sister does. She, my sister just recognizes the dogs need to be walked. She comes behind us, cleans the kitchen. You know, she notices one of us hasn't eaten, so she prepares food for us. It's just fucking. It's amazing. You know, it's like that's awesome. That's all. We, that's I feel like it's just the ne- enough help to make to handle the because you, you you can't change the two hour eating like that's just the kid needs that. Mm-hmm. And he's gonna wake us up, you know. It's just inevitable. He's gonna wake up and need to eat. When everything. they start to eat solid, is when they start to. When you start throwing a little bit of solid food, then they go longer. Yeah. Right. You know yeah. what I mean. So I'm looking, and because you know, 
the 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 two hours, which is nuts to me too, is that's what the start time of her feeding is, and it, it, they, you count that time. So Another, in reality, she's like an hour and a half. Every <laughs> hour, hour, it's every hour, hour and a half. <laughs> so it's not really, it's not. I, I was like, man, for a while there, I was like, okay, I could deal with two hour windows. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's not a two hour window. It's a fucking. Sometimes it's a half hour window. Sometimes he nurses for an hour, and he's hungrier today, and so he nurses. Half hour, burp, and then he's down. Oh, wow, he's resting 30 minutes. Oh, he's back up. Time to eat again. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <sighs> and that that's sometimes and more often than not, two o'clock in the morning, and Bro, three o'clock and four o'clock. What a great example of like the, the, the greatest lesson in life that we learn over and over again, which is the the, the best things in life are the hardest things yes. in life. It's I, always so, like that. so rewarding because it is. Man, Everything it is a challenge. Yeah, there, there's nothing that's super rewarding. It wears you down. Hard as fuck. I, yeah. you, it's so crazy that you say that because that's exactly what's been going through my mind. And like, I'm like, you know what's funny? Like, this is why people talk about parenting and being a father or being a mother is one of the most rewarding things in your life. It's very little to do with like just the experience of having a kid and everything to do with it's probably one of the most miserable fucking things that you <laughs> you have to get through. <laughs> Finally, you're yeah, here, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know and, what I'm saying? So? And it's like, it's like, <laughs> oh, I feel like high fiving. Any you, motherfucker dude. that goes through it is just like so proud of yeah. himself. You know, fuck yeah, the kid. I mean, you're, you're proud of it. Yeah. You're proud that you didn't. You didn't turn into a fuck up because yeah. you probably you need, like you're not a psychopath. Because there's it. probably a high percentage of motherfuckers that like give up and are like, fuck this. I didn't sign up for this, and they out, dude. And they're a bad father. And it's like, man, if you just. If you're just there, you're, you're already a, you're already better than most. Like if you're just there, yeah. and then if you actually then care about like mm -hmm. you know which the things I like to think we think about like we're or think about the behaviors and the things we do and how we talk to him and the energy that's around him and yada yada all this other stuff like that's even another level of parenting. It's Bro, like it's, you just show up to do the job. You're already a badass. It's ninety percent right. uh, fucking hard work, sacrifice, tired, anxiety, fucking fear, spending money. It's ninety percent that, and then there's the ten percent of the time that makes it all like seriously worth it. Like, and yeah. it's it's it can be the smallest. When he says dada, yeah. Or whatever. You're yeah. Like, oh my god. You know, I'm so happy I did all that. For, yeah. You know, it's like the smallest. You have to ride that wave. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. And that's what I mean. Like, it, life is like that, man. It's like the hardest fucking things. Yeah, man. Are the most rewarding. And if you take out the hard part, I don't know if you're right. I don't know if it well, would be I teach that. I teach that. I mean, it's probably one of the most common conversations that I have when I get interviewed is we talk about adversity, and you know, and they ask, you know, how I went through challenges. What I learned early on in my life that. The more adverse or the more challenging something was, the darker, the harder, the better it was on the other mm -hmm. side, and the more rewarding it was. And so that's how the I look at fatherhood right now. It's like, oh well, no wonder it's so fucking amazing. It's so amazing because it's fucking so miserable well, trying to make it through it. That's it. It's so fucking hard <laughs> that because you survived it and you actually have a kid that's functioning, eating. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like I did it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's not a murderer. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, uh, I, it's you know, and again, I went like I said this this weekend. I was at my grandfather's birthday, and to see him sit there at 88 years old, you know, he's towards the the, the towards the the, the the final stretch, right? Again, his health is good and all that stuff, but he's 88. And you watch him sit there and look at everything he's created. You know, he came to this country. It was him, my grandmother, my mom, and my uncle. And this is before they had the other kids. And now he looks out and he sees all of his kids have their kids and all those kids have kids. And he sits there and you can just see the the look on his face like, wow, look at what Look at what we did. Look at what we've done. Yeah, it's you know, cool. together. And it, you can see that. You can see the pride that he has. But I mean, I mean, the stories that they tell me. Like my grandfather was. He came to this country. He was a custodian. He didn't speak English. He had to clean bathrooms. That's how he supported his family. Mm. And you better believe it was fucking hard and challenging. And he had four kids, and it's crazy. But I don't know, man. I feel that shift yeah. for me too. That's that's actually true. Like, uh, man, I have this crazy motivation and it's like for many years it was very selfishly driven like a you know I had a number I wanted to make and things I wanted to buy and a place I wanted to be I don't like right now the way I think is like I'm thinking about gen my generations later which yeah. I never thought like that before now mm -hmm. it's like the the things that I the money that I save today the money that I make today the the things that we're building business wise it's like I don't care if that takes thirty years to mature or happen or what like that. I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking about that yeah. generation now. It's the where, legacy. You're yeah, doing. I didn't think about that before. Before it was about myself. It was mm, always right. it was about get myself out of this position, put myself in this position. 
And now like the thought process is completely different. Like the things that make my, my day to day or the things that make my decisions when it comes to finances and business, I, I I'm always like, my wheels are turning. It's one of the greatest things I think a a man can do. I Mm -hmm. really do. I honestly think, and I, I I wish more people communicated it that way because I think we have such a a selfish egocentric, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, consumer based society that it's like not cool you know, to be a dad, like, oh no, I want to have the money. I want to buy the cars. I want to. Yeah. No, no. Who needs that? No, no, you know I... what? The best men in the world are fucking good fathers. That's. I'm going to make that statement right now. Those are the best men in the world are the great fathers, and a lot of times they don't get the spotlight, but they do great things, and it's hard work, and it's selfless. You know what I'm saying? This goes to moms too. We're dads here, and that's yeah, why I'm talking yeah. about dads. This definitely goes out to moms, and more often than not, moms do a better job. But uh, you know, this is to dads too. It's fucking cool, man. You're yeah. if you're a good dad and you're there for your well, kids you, and you, you sacrifice. You talk about that, like in what you just shared with your grandfather, and you know, you don't really think about this because we you talk about your life right now and you think about your dad, but it's like if it wasn't for your grandfather, mind pump wouldn't exist. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like just you just, that's crazy to think yeah. that like and I can't imagine how amazing that must feel to be him sitting there and seeing the legs of all the family and going like, bro. I had a conversation with my grandfather, which I usually he always he always asks me how the business is doing, but he likes to know specifics. Hmm. Like he wants to know how much, how much, <laughs> <laughs> how, how many you sell. Because, be yeah, real to me. But you know yeah. what? We sit there and I show him. He tells I tell him he goes show me, show me. So I open up and I show him, you know, say you know sales and production and this is how many people listen to your show and I'm explaining to him the numbers. And my grandfather's looking, and he and he'll cry every time. He starts crying. He gets real proud. He goes, "I'm happy I came here." You know, like I came to this country. Oh wow! And here, you know, you hear that, and you're like, "Fuck!" And I mean, I respect the man, and he's by no means is he a perfect guy. He's extremely flawed. We all are, but I have so much respect, you know, and I've had those kind of role models. Like, and it's fucking hard, man. It ain't easy, but yeah. it's the best job in the world, dude. It's the best job in the world. Do yeah. it, do it well. Anyway, speaking of kids and all that stuff, I read something crazy this weekend. I did not know this was true. What? So Disney World, okay, Disney World. Did you guys know that when Disney World opened in Florida in 1960, I think it was four or 62, that they actually got approval by the government to build a nuclear power plant? What? To power them. Because they, they, they knew they were going to be so big yeah. that they're like, we may need nuclear power. So Disneyland got approval to build a nuclear power plant. Now, they never what did. What happened? Yeah. They never did, I think, because nuclear power started falling out of favor. Uh-oh. But they yeah, still. What, what year was that? I think it was in 1962. Oh, I was gonna say saying. Chernobyl was when. Yeah, yeah so know, they were right? like, "Hey, this would be great right in the middle of a kids park." Let's yeah. <laughs> nuclear <laughs> meltdown. Bad idea. <laughs> but you want to know what's crazier? They still have the the permits and the rights to it. So if Disney if Disney World wanted to build a nuclear power plant, oh, that's not an expiration on that. They still could. That's what no. the article said. Yes. Watch what? Doug. Doug's gonna, <laughs> Doug, Doug will pull it up right now. That's hilarious. Yeah. See, it's true. There is. Uh, this could change in the near future. Oh, it's nineteen. What does that say? 67? Well, look at look at that two thousand nineteen article right yeah, there. It says yeah. Disney would or World could have gone nuclear. Yep. Forbes. Yep. Yep. And they still got. So it's nineteen sixty seven. Or is that fifty seven or sixty seven? Sixty seven. Yeah, they still have a permit in Florida to build a nuclear power plant. Dude, that is crazy. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> random fact. Yeah. yeah. That's totally Well, random. if you think about it, with nuclear power, that would have been, they would have saved a shit ton of oh, money yeah. on energy. Of course. Yeah. I mean, to power everything there. I mean, they, I'm sure they consume like half the state's uh, electricity Dude, bill. Yeah. You, you imagine the, the light parade at night? Yeah. <laughs> <It was nuclear laughs> the, the fireworks. Oh, <laughs> it's all glowing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Anyway, I read that. Yeah. I thought it was pretty crazy. Dude, I, I saw the, this caught my attention. I was reading The Hustle and uh, there was, you know, those those uh, those those cars that are in the middle of a mall oh, and God. people like sign up such for them. a scam dude and like in casinos and all that but it was interesting so this one was actually in Milpitas where this guy did investigation and found out like went down the rabbit hole does anybody actually ever really win a car no no the the Nobody. most somebody's actually actually won is like three to five hundred dollars of like consolation prizes after they get through all these different sales tactics to hammer them so i guess like it's popular for a lot of these um what do you call timeshare companies yeah so what they do is they get a a car from a local dealership and they like they they lease it or they 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 loan it to them and then they just like put it like right in the middle of the the mall and then they put these little kiosks there and they get all their information and then they basically just you know like 
if you go through the process, they, they call them and they say they won something and then they get people down to do this whole timeshare thing and hammer them. So I don't have proof of this, So, but I'm going to say that I'm not going to name names, but I believe that there are several supplement companies that people have heard me talk openly about that I don't care about that use this exact same scam and hustle that's been around it's just forever. in a different form. In a different form. By like, for example, win five thousand, share our, share this, post this, do this. Oh yeah, I see chan- all the time. chance to win five thousand dollars. You ain't winning shit. And I don't think anybody fucking wins. And even if someone does, I think it's someone internally, and mm-hmm. it's a bunch of bullshit. Mm-hmm. I think, and that, and I heard that was going around with a couple of these supplement companies, and that's how a lot of them grew and had traction early on before everybody knew who the fuck they what were. What a yeah. fuck! I hate that. Yep. Ah. <sighs> You so slimy, slimy shits. Yeah, and it sucks because people still do it, and they're like so excited. Like, yeah, yeah I could win this car. Yeah. And it's such are, an illusion. You guys remember those uh, those uh, clearinghouse sweepstakes or whatever were they called? Those uh, oh yeah 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 come oh, in the mail and yeah, shit. Yeah yeah, and then they have the video of like they're showing up with the balloons. You won in the big check. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that got me to answer the door when I was a kid so many times. <laughs> Joel Bell rang, I'll get it. Uh, yeah. Ah, man. It's oh, nobody. No. Another yeah. seventh well, in Venice. Well, yeah, those, those, what they'll do is they'll have you fill out a form for the car or whatever, and then they'll call you and be like, you, want, you didn't win a car, but you won well, we a vacation in fucking wherever. We did that with the gym business. Uh, we had the lead boxes. Oh, yeah. It was oh, win, a, yeah. win a free gym membership. We never gave a free Everybody won a free five-day pass. Yeah, and, and what we did is you get you called all those leads. Oh, you didn't win, but I'd like to offer you a free week in the gym so you could try it out. And they, hey, people yeah. would be excited because they're like, oh, cool, I still got something. You were right. supposed. Oh, you, you, you know what you're be- supposed to do? You were supposed to send all those slips in to corporate, and then they would pick a year membership. Yeah. Did you ever turn the slips in? No, nobody, nobody did. Nobody ever yeah, turned yeah, the slips in. Nobody used all those. Yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah, did. Yeah, you called those in. Those are hot leads. Yeah, you That's called crazy. those leads in. Hey, did you guys see uh, uh, Mike Matthews' story the other day? That he's trying to make fun. So you know how we always make fun of him for posting the, the pictures of himself riding a stationary bike yes. in his yeah. flip flops and underwear. Yeah, yeah. underwear. <laughs> so yeah. He just did it again. He posted it up again, and he asked his audience what they thought of it or whatever. Which I think is <laughs> so. I, I love. I, love I will, Mike. what I would love That's to great. do with Mike because so those that don't know, we're having a live event with Mike. It's at mindpumplive.com. You guys can get there's still some tickets. I believe there's only two VIP plus for the dinner with us. I think there's only two seats of those left. Uh, and I think there's a couple of the VIPs. He's, he's, he's one of the most knowledgeable guys, he, especially in the business. Uh, and, he's, and he's a and he's a good friend. He's a great time. Like that, I'm I, I'm excited as hell for this live it's event. It's gonna be wild. Um, what was I gonna say about him? Oh, I was gonna talk about Mike uh, coming down here, but I can't remember why I was gonna share with. Him. Oh, I wanted to do his bike. So you know how we have our chairs? Oh, have him sit on the bike. Yeah, we, have <laughs> the bike. we have him sit spinning. on the bike. Yeah, we don't even tell him, right? Just we field just, questions. We just put we put the, our three fucking <laughs> production chairs that we sit in all the time, and then yeah. we'll, we'll fucking get an elliptical bike or whatever for him right next to us. <laughs> That's got to be the move. Yeah. That'll yeah. be great. Yeah. I can't wait because he's a smart dude. Um, and the thing that I like most about Mike is that he's super honest. Like yeah. he'll just tell you whatever you want to know. That's why we all connected with him. So this live event's gonna be fun. Well, I would I would kill for the the dinner, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like that. I mean, I'll tell you straight up right now. I pick his business we, brain. We we have yeah. we have a ton of friends that we have met in this space now, and I have a lot of respect for a lot of them, and spoke highly of a lot of you know the Ben Pakolskis and the um you know Bedroses, Tom Billus. Like, I would say that the person that I probably communicate the most with and have learned from and uh, just been. Uh, impressed time over time with their business brain is Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike is one of the most underrated people in the space. And super open to share. Because he doesn't flaunt his success, but that motherfucker is extremely successful and very good at what he does and an open book. And so, man, our dinner conversations, when we sit down and we chat about business, it's some of the most favorite, my favorite times that we have had with all the people that we've had an opportunity to hang out and be around. So, to me, that is, I mean, I would be all over that yeah. if I was like an entrepreneur trying to come up in the space. If, yeah, that's it, how you network. Yeah, and if if there are no tickets available when this episode airs, uh, my sincerest apology. I know they're flying right now, but hopefully there's some available. It's at mindpumplive.com, and then you can go on and you can buy either general admission, VIP, or VIP+. Plus. And again, if there's none available when this airs, uh, my apologies. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Michael Vanderloo. What are your favorite row variations for strength, hypertrophy, etc.? Good question. Row it, variations? Yeah, it's oh, a great man. question because uh, I love the T-bar row. Rowing is oh, that's one of my favorites. Love it's got to be one of my favorite row. exercises. Well, let's start with the most basic one, right? The barbell row. That's going to be the most basic exercise. Um, I personally prefer an overhand grip with my barbell row. But mm. you know, in the '90s, I don't know if you guys remember this. In the 90s, it became real popular to supinate your grip, to have that kind of reverse grip row. Mm -hmm. That started with Dorian Yates. Dorian Yates, who was Mr. Olympia, uh, he would post uh, you know, pictures or whatever. He wouldn't post. He was in the magazines before social media. And they would talk about how he liked to row with a supinated grip. And this is because Mike Menser, who at one point changed the way Dorian Yates trained from high volume to low volume, high intensity, which became his kind of brand, he told him that the biceps are stronger in the supinated position. So if you want to lift more weight, you need to go with a supinated grip. And so mm. that's how Dorian rode. And then all of a sudden it became a thing. Mm. Everybody rode that way. The reason why that's not my absolute favorite, although I like it, is because it does place the bicep in a little bit of a vulnerable position. In fact, you'll find guys who are really strong sometimes you know, hurt their bicep because they're rowing so much weight with that with that supinated grip. Yeah. But uh, T-bar rows up there, I, barbell rows got to be my favorite. That's going to be my favorite all around well, you gotta, rowing it, exercise. It, the the difference between supinated and pronated also though, it also changes the recruitment pattern in the back because you're now, because the elbow position now. It tends to drive mm -hmm. the elbows in. Yeah, cuz when you go supinated, now you can tuck the elbows all the way by your side. When you're pronated, they tend to flare out a little bit. So mm -hmm. you're going to change a little bit of like how it feels. So I like to include I, I include both. Like mm -hmm. so it's a uh, a real normal for me if I I found that oh I've I've rode you know the last five times in a pronated grip I'll come in and mm. go oh I'm gonna go supinated grip today just to vary it but I love unconventional shit for this like uh, uh, I was doing sled rows uh, the other day oh yeah you were weren't you yeah and it's it, you know like it just it, it's something where I'm like providing that kind of movement uh, with it and. Um, I, I just love like the the power output I can. I, I can, love. I you can got throw me into in sled there. rows. Yeah, you got me into sled rows, and I fell. I was doing a lot of that when I was competing. Anywhere that had a great, anytime there was grass, and I was doing it back, I threw sled rows in because I just love the. We way should it. explain sled rows for people who don't know. So it's you you attach ropes or handles, we, I should say. We to did a, a YouTube, sled. didn't we? Yeah, it's kind of like a TRX hand, like so basically straps, like you hook to the front of the sled, and then you stack the sled with weight. And basically, just gets to where it's taut, and then you you kind of sit in your squat or your uh, yeah, basically like a squat position, lean over, and you explosively and then row, you explosively right? row. So yeah, the thing I like about did we it, do it? Did we do a YouTube video of it? Uh, I think I we, we did. I thought we did, Doug. Maybe look it up while we're talking. Yeah, because I thought we did a YouTube video on this way back when we were doing it at the other gym. Now it doesn't have the negative portion of the rep, which some people would say is a, oh, right. a detriment, but I see that as a positive. It's a positive because almost every other exercise you do for row does. have have that yeah and so it's for for it's an exercise where it's you are it you all you are working is the concentric motion and concentric it's less damaging to the muscle so you can actually add this to increase volume and minimize the the amount of recovery that you need from it so i wouldn't always only do concentric exercises but to add a row like that and make it explosive no to emphasize power and to get that concentric contraction well it's kind of like a, a pen row. row yeah another pen -lay row is example. another example of yes. that yes, pen -lay yes, row yes. you're exploding up and then you let the bar drop down yeah. so that's the exact same thing only this so is i it. love that and i also love um, uh, we, we added this in one of our programs too where you're bent over and you get a kettlebell and we add rotation with that row so it's more of a i forget what we ended up calling it but this is something i used to do with the kettlebells all the time and Anyway, a real heavy kettlebell. You're leaning over. You're kind of propping one arm on the on the, the forefoot, the, the the leg in front, and I'm rotating and pulling it in towards the chest. Yeah, I like. Um, I actually prefer kettlebells over dumbbells for the dumbbell row type exercise. Yeah, just because of the way the weight is situated at mm. the bottom, it's kind of less out. It's uh, there's it's less of it's in the way. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough of a difference where I enjoy the the, the way it feels. Dumbbell rows have to be one of my top three uh, row exercises. I love a good dumbbell row. Well, it's also one of the more because you're doing, especially because you're doing single, right? If we're talking single, because yeah. you can do that double too. I used to do double dumbbell rows a lot, where mm -hmm. I just grab a pair of dumbbells, bend over, and do a bent over row that way. But single dumbbell rows, there's there's 
two major ways that you can do a difference, although I've seen lots of different variations of it, where you start to get some anti-rotational benefits to it or rotational benefits mm-hmm. to it, right? So that's a kind of an add to that. That's where, why I like it, because you get that little bit of a twist at the top. Right, which there's a lot of carryover and benefit to that, I think, of doing some sort of rotation in there mm-hmm. for rotational strength and then also making it really strict. You know, I mean, you take a... I mean, I, I can I can rip up like you know probably I don't know. You like, can go heavy on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I've I've I know I've done well over 120 before for a single dumbbell if I'm ripping right. Mm. But then I could take that and do it controlled with like 80 pounds and make it fucking brutal and tough. And there's benefits to both ways. We yeah, did. there it is. Power sled pull. It's called on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, we did. Uh, I did Excellent. Okay, yeah, cool. look at, look. I I do love this oh, move, look at dude. That. Look this is such. Form. God, you're yeah, you are a beast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, how, look how young you look. I know. Oh, what yeah. happened? Yeah. That was only four years ago. Oh. Are we aging faster? Yeah. What the hell is going on here? It's accelerating. Yeah. That's crazy. You it's know, all this wisdom, you know. J- Justin got me into that. You know what I like about it, too? It's, you know, talk about maybe one of the most functional, you know, back exercises you could do. Because oh. when you, you think about real life, like that's, you would get your feet. If you were going to have to try and grab or drag or pull something, yeah. you would leverage your whole body. The, when sure. I, I used to do those, so f- judo and jujitsu, especially if you're in a gi, <laughs> if you're fighting in a gi, that position, the way you're exploding, the way you're positioning your body, especially if you're setting yourself up for a throw in judo, mm-hmm. that is so much carryover from that exercise. So I used to do that, but I didn't have a sled. This was back when I used to do jujitsu and judo. I didn't have a sled, so I used to do it to my. Um, it was almost like a. What's the machine with the arms? We have one out here. Uh, free motion. Free. Mo- it's kind of like a free motion, um, but uh, it actually had an attachment with a band so that the weight wouldn't slam up and down. Mm-hmm. And I do these kind of explosive rows to simulate, you know, grabbing the gi, pulling, and then going into a throw. Mm-hmm. But the sled's even better. The sled is just so much more natural. Now, along like those lines too, which you could not. Now, this is something that's be very limited to where you're at. Like, there's only been a few times I've been able to do this, and I love to do it if I can get a hold of it. If someone has a long enough rope that you can tie to a sled, and you sit down on the ground, and you actually oh, and then yeah, keep rowing, too. and then you drag, then you oh, drag yeah, with rope. Those. Now, some of the gyms I've seen, I know some of the new, some of the gyms actually have that. Like, yeah. you've seen a machine that has the the rope that you're you're able to pull like that. Yeah, you have a pull. Pulley, that's like a it's on a continuous kind of serpentine belt so yeah. you're, you're, you keep pulling it and it you can make it as as tight and as as uh, hard as you want and yeah. what's great about those those unconventional type movements like that is just your body's just not used to ever training that way mm-hmm. you know everybody's seen a seated row everyone's seen a barbell row everyone's seen a dumbbell row like and you've done that a million times in your workout man you really want to throw throw a curveball at your back mm-hmm. you know you drag a sled like that or do some rope pulls i mean that's incredible yeah. now you did mention T-bar row. Um, for me, old school T-bar row is superior yeah. to the chest supported T-bar oh, row. Oh, yeah, yeah. The By stan- far. The standing one. By far. Yeah. You just get standing T-bar row. I like mm. a relatively narrow mm. gri- grip, and I really can activate my lats um, uh, in an exercise like that just because of the position of the bar. And if you are if you have a home gym, you don't need... Now, you can get a, a an anchor. What do they call it? Uh, a landmine anchor, um, and they're relatively inexpensive. Or do what I did. Which was I take my bar, stick it in corner, put it in the corner of the wall. They have a handle attachment for it now too. What do you put over the bar? Yeah, you just put it under the bar, like right where it ends, and you just put it right up to that. Like I gotta spot, buy one, and then boom. Yeah. I gotta buy one because what I do is I put the V bar underneath the bar. Oh yeah, you know that little yeah, V yeah, pull yeah. down bar. Um, what about machines? What about machine rows? What are some of your favorite cable row? It's got to be one of the best low pu- low pulley cable row. Yeah, sure. It's got to be up there. I mean, I I mean, I like messing with those uh, hammer strength. Ones hammer strength too. is a good job. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I like the feel the of hammer it. strength. The, the hammer strength you. ISO row used to be yes. one of my favorite machines. Yep, yep. That's yeah. another one that was popularized by Dorian Yates. Yeah, by far. Uh, yeah. They have a good one too. Hammer strength also has a good one where you're you're seated. There's a chest support. You reach up and the grips are yeah. supinated. Yeah. Yes. And when you row, they come down. So it's mm-hmm. almost like this real low kind of row on the last. It really opens the chest up. Too, they they have I the like. one that comes from down up also. And then, then comes I was, up. I was doing that yet live in my last back workout. And you feel that like in the traps yeah. and rhomboids? Yeah. Yeah, I got really into heavy rows for a long time. The the, the Gold's Gym, I don't know if it's still Gold's Gym on uh, Monterey. <laughs> Did they change that one too to American Barbell? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that one had dumbbells that went up to 150. And at one point, I was ripping up the 150s and just doing heavy rows. And it, you know, when you you want to talk about back, mid back thickness, um, I would say rows are probably your best bet. You want to get that width in the, and especially in the lats. You want to do your pull downs, your pull ups, that kind of stuff. But just for that overall back thickness, rows, rows are king. Best for that. Yep. Next question is from More Jojo. What characteristics or qualities do you think separates people who adhere to their fitness goals and health behaviors compared to those who don't? 
Did you ever notice common traits in the clients you trained? Ooh, that's a cool question. Yeah. That's I actually cool wrote question. a whole um, article on this. Um, it's not up yet, um, but I'm sure it'll be up in the next few weeks. And I, you know, I, I positioned uh, the article like this. like The vast majority of people that work out in gyms or anywhere, um, the vast majority of them do it for one particular goal or reason, and that's to change how they look. They're, 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 the, the number one goal is to change their aesthetics. But there is a minority of people that work out that don't work out necessarily for aesthetics. They enjoy the aesthetic benefits, but they really go for other reasons. Those are the people that tend to be the most consistent. That's what I've always found. It's the people who come to the gym and they're not like necessarily trying to change and sculpt their body and be lean. They've been working out for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And you ask them like, why are you so consistent? I used to do this. I, every time I had somebody who, when I'd manage a gym and I noticed that the, the same regulars that came in all the time and I'd look at their membership card and notice that they were members for 10 years or 15 years, I'd talk to them. I love talking to my, my regular members because those people kind of, they're like the mayors of the gym, if you will. And I talked to them, how long have you been working out? Oh, I've been working out for 15 years. How often do you work out? Oh, four days a week. Have you always been consistent? Pretty much always consistent. Why do you work out? What keeps you consistent? They never said, oh, because I like the way it makes me look. None of them ever said that. It was always like, well, you oh, I just love working I out. Love I love the way it makes it. me feel. Yeah. You, you say this all the time, and I think it's, it's it fits what we're talking about right here, which is the you know training because you love yourself, not because you hate yourself, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the clients... The clients that have the real, the long, long-term success and continue on, it's it's really easy for anybody to get motivated for a wedding coming up, or Las Vegas is in you know three months, or you know you're going to be on a beach, and so you you get motivated to look a different way or drop five pounds of fat or whatever it is. But that's not what keeps you going forever. It's the it's the clients that I could learn, and this I didn't learn this till way later to start to help teach this and implement this Oh yeah, same because here. everybody comes to you with a goal like that like you and and as a trainer at first you i mean you're you're in a service business so like oh you come you want to lose 10 pounds let me help you lose 10, 10 pounds that's all we're speaking to it wasn't until later on as a trainer did i start to evolve and realize like man am i really helping these people because sure i get them off 10 pounds but then they come back and hire me eight months later again because they put the 10 pounds right back on it's like yeah that's great for business for me because i'm continually having to sell them but i'm really not fundamentally changing these people and what it was that I wasn't doing was I wasn't speaking to all the other parts of health and fitness and what their tra their exercise did for them. I wasn't asking about their stool. I wasn't talking about their relationships with their partner. I wasn't talking about how it was improving their sleep. I wasn't talking about how it was improving their work ethic and their relationships with their friends. Like when I started to help like tell my clients like, okay, I know your goal is 10 pounds, right? And we're starting to go and they're like, Tell me like, oh man, I feel great. I got on the scale today, Adam. I'm down three pounds. Instead of me just celebrating the down the three pounds, I'll be like, oh, that's great. I'm like, so how's your sleep going? Like, oh, did you know that? Like, how's work been doing? Are you more productive at work? I started asking all these other questions that they probably weren't connecting their weight loss with, and how that impacted their life that way. And then when you make when you help them make that switch, and they finally do, they find a new motivation. To go to the gym. Yeah, it's great. I, I need to lose ten pounds, or I want to lose ten pounds. But that's not why I'm going to the gym. I'm going to the gym because I'm a better person in all aspects of my life because I go to the gym. I'm better. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better employee or I'm a better boss like holy shit like when I'm exercising all these other things improve regardless if my scale goes up or down I notice that so even if I maybe be not eating as best as I could be eating or you know in the best physical shape visually that I've ever been in man exercise does so many other things for my my overall health when you make when you when you get a client to make that connection that's what separates them yeah, I mean, those are the ones that have put that together. They've they've strung all those dots together. They've been able to see productivity go up, you know, in the workplace. They've been able to see their relationships improve, their family life, like all these things. Like those are the ones I've had clients that you know, uh, most of them were early in the morning because uh, you know, for the most part, my best clients, the most consistent ones, the ones that wanted to be there the most, were typically in that window of like five a.m. till eight to ten a.m. They you know? prioritize it. Yeah, that was their thing. Like I have to have like, and they wanted it to be like the first thing. Like that. This is this is what I'm focused on solely. Like this is an improvement of myself, and then I can be my best self to everybody else. You know, the rest of my day. The irony is, and this is the funny part. If I were to list all of the real benefits that you get from uh, exercise, from consistent, regular fitness. If I were to list all of the benefits that you got, and then I were to 
uh, put the, the most important ones at the top and, and rank them in order. The irony is changing how you look is down the list. Changing how you look and looking good is actually one of the benefits that is not that important. No joke. It's true. If you really think of all the benefits, improved health, uh, reductions in depression and anxiety. By the way, studies show that consistent exercise is at least as effective as medication in the short term for helping with depressive symptoms and in the long term might actually be better. So that's just your mental state. How much does that going to impact the rest of your life? Productivity, hormones, um, your bone health, your mobility, all those things. If I were to list everything, those all beat appearance. That's the irony. Like if you could take a pill to give you all those things, but you look the same, people would spend a lot of fucking money on that pill. And it's funny because, it, you know, what Adam and Justin are saying, people think sounds obvious. It's not. You only see what you focus on. So a lot of people almost completely don't even realize all those other benefits because yeah. all they're focusing on is the fact that they still haven't lost 15 pounds. The only thing they're focused on is they have Vegas in three months, they feel fat, they know they're going to be in a bikini, and they want to fix that. So mm -hmm. I'm hiring you. And that's all that they have tunnel vision. That's on that. it. That's it. And, and now here's the other side of There's another piece of irony here. This is funny. If you focus on exercise for all those other benefits, guess what the side effect of that is? Right. You look better. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you focus just on training because you just want to change how you look, you might achieve changes with how you look. But over time, the decisions that you make because you're all aesthetics focused, over time, you will compromise your health because what ends up happening is I just want to change how I look. Diet isn't always what's ideal. It ends up turning into more starving myself and binging. I start to develop a bad relationship. Exercise turns into punishment. Uh-oh, I need to get in shape real quick. I look ugly. I'm fat, whatever. So over time, you actually start to sacrifice health in, in pursuit of aesthetics. And what ends up happening when your health declines? What do you lose? Aesthetics. Yeah. So the irony of this is, and this is, again, this is, I, I, we've worked in gyms for, for decades. The most consistent people, and I mean day in, day out, they're there. It is part of their life. It's not a struggle for them. It's not like they wake, wake up and like, oh, I got to motivate myself to get up and go to the gym. No, it's just what they do. It's just, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's just a part of their life. It's just a part of their life. Those people, they don't work out for the aesthetics. Now, they look phenomenal. All of them look phenomenal. They've been working out for years. But that's not why they go to the gym. They go to the gym because it, it, they understand the true and real life value that it brings them. So if, if you can start to uh, understand fitness through this lens, and all you have to do is focus on it. That's all you have to do. It doesn't take – it's not magic. Just start to realize and focus on it over time. You will – Always be consistent. It will never be an issue. It'll become something that you prioritize. If you focus on your aesthetics, in and out. You're going to be in and out of the gym always, all the time. It's always that way. Unless you're super body obsessed and extremely insecure about your appearance, in which case you'll probably be very consistent. But again, over time, you won't look any better and you will lose your health. Next question is from Nick Zanes. For people trying to sleep hack on a budget, what are the best investments to make? I really like these questions today. Who's who's on this today? I, so that is one, this I you? one was mine. Yeah. This is I, you guys. I like quite, this one too. Yeah, the, and I this has been on my mind actually, um, because I know that we promote things like Felix Gray and the Chili Pad, right. and which are a little pricey, right? And 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 I always want to be very clear on this show, and I think we and I because we all have a lot of integrity in what we do, and that is, and it, it's the same thing with like supplements and things like that for fitness. Like, there's definitely big rocks that everybody should focus on before you even spend any money on anything else, right? Like you don't there's a there's some major steps that you can take to being a being uh you know uh, sleep hacking or being uh, getting better sleep than buying anything whatsoever. So I think that's important to to say that and important to note that. They're because, more important than buying things. Right. They have yeah. more of an impact. Right. As, yeah. as much as I use my Felix Grey every night, I use my chili patterns and I, I love it, but I also did steps before that to already step in that direction for those things to really enhance already what I was already focused on. Mm -hmm. And right away what comes to mind to me, and I know Sal has said this before uh, on the show multiple times, and that it's one of those things that we actually just, we don't put any focus on. Mm -hmm. Everybody has like a routine. Like you get up, like I guarantee everybody has somewhat of a morning routine, even if it is as basic as mine, which is like get up, coffee, brush my teeth, shower. Like that's still a routine. Yeah. You know, I don't ever not shower. I don't ever not brush my teeth. I don't ever not have coffee. Like those, that's a routine. I do that every single morning. But what, I, but before I started to make this like a routine for my night, I never had one. 
was like you go to bed when you get tired, when your body, no your, sleep eye, your eyes, eyes can't stay open anymore, or you're done watching your favorite show or whatever. That was how you went to sleep, and there was no like getting ready for yeah. sleep the same way we get ready for you our just day. Popped on your bed, yeah. But when you start to realize the value of sleep uh, and how important it is to us, how I mean, and how we improve on all levels, man, you start to say, wow. I don't ever even think about it. What if I just start thinking about that and think, okay, is it best for me to be staring at a computer screen, a phone, or a television two minutes before I try and close my eyes and go to sleep? No, not at all. In fact, that should be like there should be at least a two hour window before you think you're gonna settle down and go to bed. Do I leave my bright ass, bright fucking lights on in my bedroom? Till I shut them off and try and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Not a good idea either. If I'm going to try and settle my brain, that light, that bright blue light makes tricks my brain into thinking it's daylight still. Yeah. I used to have this funny thing. Like I used to think eating, you know, super early was like just for old seniors, senior citizens, you know, <laughs> it was like this, this thing where like, uh, you know, man, I'm not going to do that. It's for old people, whatever. I started to be more intentional about that and stop eating. Uh, you know, seven o'clock was the latest. I would, I would make myself like dinner. And that was a game changer in terms of sleep and digestion for me. And that was a very simple thing that I could control consistently. And it was all just about, you know, again, like being intentional about it and focusing on, look, this is, this needs to happen for me to sleep better. Right. And so therefore I'm going to make it a priority. I am going to start dimming my lights down. I am going to put, you know, parameters parameters out there so it will improve you know the result of when i wake up i'm going to feel refreshed mm. versus not you you guys ever notice how and i know people listening will, will will have noticed this you ever notice how when you were a kid or maybe now as an adult when you go to the, when you went to the beach or you went swimming with your friends or maybe now your kids just then when they go swimming or go to the beach you ever notice how hard and and good they sleep that yeah. night oh yeah you ever notice that yeah. yep. i've always noticed as a kid we my aunt had a pool and whenever we'd go there and go swimming I remember I'd come home and, and when it was like bedtime, man, I would sleep and I'd sleep so hard. And I thought it was, I'm like, like oh, maybe it's swimming. It's, right, the, it's activity. the activity, but no, it's not. It's the sun. Huh? It's the sun. Yeah. It's the sunlight. Uh -huh. When you would get a lot of sun exposure during the day, it actually sets your circadian rhythm. Mm. So m the more sunlight you get during the day, it's very strongly correlated to the better sleep you're going to get at night. The less sunlight you get during the day, the less uh, good your sleep is going to be in the evening. So this is a sleep hack. Get sunlight during the day. Now, if you work indoors, maybe you can sit next to the window, go for walks outside. If you drive a car with a sunroof, open the sunroof so the sun comes down on you. But sun exposure during the day has a very positive effect on sleep. That and the sleep routine, which I tell people one to two hours before you go to bed, shut off all electronics, uh, you know, work, move around with very dim light, um, speak softly, so no more yelling or whatever. It's nighttime now. We're getting ready to go to bed, so talk softly with your kids, with your spouse. Maybe read a book. Um, do do things that kind of settle you down and get you for sleep. Do those two things. Sunlight in the day. At night, just have an hour sleep routine. And by the way, that hour before doesn't mean like you're wasting an hour. I think people think, oh, I'm going to do an hour sleep routine. Read a book. Do your journal. Yeah. Do your gratitude stuff. Yeah, dude. It's, you can still do things. Just have like dim lights in the house. Mm -hmm. I use uh, Himalayan salt uh, lamps throughout the house because they, they emit those. a really- I love those. Aren't they great? Oh, they're the best. They, they emit a, a soft red glow. And so I put them throughout the house. We turn off all the lights. You can still see. It's just dark. It feels like there's a, like a fire. It's like fire light mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we just move around. Everybody sleeps better. But sunlight, it's a big one. A lot of people don't realize it. Like the less sun you have during the day, the harder it's going to be for you to go to sleep. And now if you're thinking about it, if you're listening to this, put it together. Think of all the times you've been outside all day long and what that ends up happening, what that does to your sleep at night. It makes a huge difference. Those two things, far better than all the gadgets and, and blue blocker glasses and all the things you could do. Way, 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 way more effective. Here's a third one that you can do. Make sure you're cool at night. Yes. So for some people, that means you have to have your AC on. Other people sleep naked yeah. or sleep with very little clothing sleep on. Sleep with your window open. And with, yeah. Cool, a cool body temperature tells the body and the brain it's time to go to sleep. You combine those three things and now do you them can, consistently. Watch what happens. Now you can see why we've we've partnered up though with all those companies. That's the reason why we accepted those companies because they work with those things. Because right? exactly all those main things, like right, right. So I know, and this is how I use these companies. Like there's a day, there's days. 
where I know it would be ideal that I get out and get in the sun. But the, the truth of the matter is sometimes that doesn't happen. So I love having that juve light in there. Like that's mm -hmm. And that's how I use it when I need to. I would way rather, and I always try to do the sun and not use the juve. Mm -hmm. That's my, my goal is to not use it, but I have it there for that reason. Same thing goes for my Felix Grey glasses. Oh, I would rather me discipline myself, not look at my phone, not watch TV, not do anything on electronics beyond seven o'clock. That way the last two or three hours in my house, I want to know what the reality is. I tend to be looking at my phone. I tend to be watching TV till eight, nine, ten o'clock. So I just discipline myself to put my glasses on. I would also would like to have 50-something degrees in my house, but I obviously can't have that anymore with my kids. So <laughs> the chili pad has done wonders for me because it keeps the bed cooler. Like, so there, you know, you don't need those things. There's ways to do this all naturally, and and I yeah, it's better. We'll, we'll we'll all stand by that, regardless of being sponsored by any of these companies. We would I would always promote somebody, just like the whole natural food thing. Doesn't mean that it does there's not value in having a protein shake or using a green juice every once in a while. But the idea is that we're always striving to get it all whole food or nat the natural way first but these tools they, they they're nice to have when you can't do that or you miss it and then you supplement the mm -hmm. same way it's no different with this next question is from mindfully mel i've been seeing a lot of this all in approach influencers are claiming they're doing it to gain control over extreme hunger and eventually get their body to plateau to where their body is supposed to be naturally so are you guys... I have no idea what this is. So I'll tell you. So there's these fitness influencers oh, on Instagram who are... A lot of them are female, and they always post pictures of themselves being lean and skinny or whatever. And there's this trend now where they're posting uh, that they're going to go all in with diet. Like, that's it. I have all this crazy hunger. I want my body. I want my, my period to come back normally. I want to feel healthy again. And they're doing this, what's called this all-in approach, where they just go crazy with food and eat a whole bunch. So one of them has been eating, one in particular, she's been eating close to 5,000 calories what? a day and has gained 30 pounds in a two-month period to get her, and, and, and the goal is to get your body to its natural body weight. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Now, I, now, you know, in, in, uh, the reason why I picked this question is because I want to address this. Hmm. This is something that, that the space, fitness space does very well. They take some good knowledge, some good nuggets of information, and then they pathologize it and turn it into more Issues, more problems. Bastardize it. Yeah. So like, okay, there is some good nuggets here. Um, the extreme dieting, the restricting, the body image issues of, that, that cause a lot of these people, in particular women, to consume really, really low calories over long periods of time to achieve a, an ideal that's almost impossible, where they lose their menstruation, the hormones go out of whack, they don't feel good. It, yes, they do need to eat more. They need to eat more food. They need to allow their body to gain some weight, even gain some body fat, so they can normalize and become more healthy. That's true. Going about it by saying, I'm going to eat as much as I can or as much as I want to and go from one extreme, which is 1,200 calories or whatever, to 5,000 calories a day. There's another word for that. And that's the, the, the restrict binge uh, type mentality. It's, it's, it's the other coin or excuse me, the other side of the uh, you know, eating disorder or bad food relationship coin. So if you have a coin that's the food relationship issue, on one side, it's starving yourself and overworking out. The other side is just binging and saying, I don't care, or whatever. So uh, when you see these types of things, that's not the kind of advice that you want. Um, when I work with people who are super restricted for long periods of time, I never tell them, okay, here's what I want you to do. Go all in, eat everything, mm -hmm. get your body to normalize. N what? No. Yeah. It's a slow process. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to slowly increase your calories. Let's focus on strength. And let's build a good relationship with food. This is not a good relationship with food. I feel like this is just another attempt for influencers to try and survive because it's a dying breed. Totally. Oh my god. It's totally. a dying. It's Thank a, God. Finally, it's a dying breed, and we're and the numbers are supporting it now. That yeah, less, talk about those articles. Less and less. Yeah, you know, it's it's been it's reduced by fifty percent. That's a big jump in just like the last year in terms of what influencers. Yeah, just actually, the, having. actually having influence. I mean, how many people are actually engaging in the posts that are actually clicking through and buying things from these people that are actually doing anything that these people are saying less and less people are giving a fuck and it's just it's just good and who was it we were just talking to the other day that uh you know said that we were fitness influencers and i want to make something really fucking clear on this show is that i do not think that the three of us are fitness influencers maybe you think that because we influence whatever but 
We did not get into this space trying to be influencers. We saw an opportunity to build a business in this space because there was so much crap information. And we're like, this is going to be easy. All we have yeah. to do is go out, tell, tell, the truth. tell the truth, and share good science-based There's information. There's a massive difference in that approach and, and the other approach that we see out there just trying to peddle something right out of the gate. Yeah, or just get attention to then influence people to buy shit. Like right. that was, we didn't know, it was not let's become big influencers. No, it was never, ever that intention whatsoever. It was there's a need in the market. Yeah. We saw the Let's need in the market. Help people. And, and and that is what it is. It's not I do not consider myself an influencer, nor do I <laughs> yeah, ever want to. It makes wanna. me angry. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I don't who was it that said that? We I were don't together. know, dude. Somebody no. said that just recently when we were together. Was yeah. it Christina? Um, I, don't I don't know, know maybe. She might have just like mentioned it. Yeah, we were with somebody. I'm like, don't fucking put lumpus in that group. <laughs> we are not that. We're three normal fucking guys, just a bunch of trainers that have been doing this for a really fucking long time happened to be really good at our jobs and saw a, a massive opportunity in our space. Saw that there were a bunch of influencers in this space yeah. giving out a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, they were like, you know, giving our clients the wrong information that we were having to kind of deconstruct and then tell them the right thing to do. And so it was out of frustration, really. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's, it reminds me of, it's also, you've seen this trend, right, with the, the influencer, uh, you know, girls in particular, where now they're posting pictures of themselves sitting down so you can see their little fat roll or like this is me without makeup or or taking you know, a shit and yeah, posting stuff yeah like it, it's just another like here's look how real I am it's a very staged photo it's a very right. you know look g gain attention type of deal no listen uh, over like restricting yourself um, starving yourself overworking yourself that's a bad relationship with exercise and food um, going to eat to deal with extreme hunger, whatever that means, um, to the point where you're going to see where your body goes, gaining 30 pounds in two months or whatever. That's another uh, symptom of a bad relationship to food and exercise. Now, maybe somebody can make the argument and say, well, in order for me to find my normal, I had to test both extremes. But in my experience working with people in that, you know, starve, binge type, you know, eating, you know, type it of mentality. It worse. It, it, the swings keep going and they actually start to get worse. Where the, the, term, the restrictions become bigger. And the that's where the term yo-yo dieting came yeah, from. That's yeah. exactly what that is. No, it's a slow process. It's about changing behaviors and it's real hard work here. You know, here's the thing. It's fucking hard. It's not easy. It's not. And, and I mean, it's hard in the real sense. Like, yes, it's restricting your calories every single day is hard, but for someone with body image issues, it's actually a coping mechanism. I know. I had certain, you know, body image issues. I had to, I dealt with some of this stuff. And what I did was real hard for most people. I ate 6 to 8 meals a day. I brought them with me to work. I never missed a workout. I took every supplement. I never ate out with friends. I did all that stuff. It was real hard, but in reality it was kind of a coping mechanism. And so this this back and forth that they're starting to promote, you know, and I get a little upset cuz I see people following them and thinking, "I'm going to do this all-in approach." And it's like, "Oh, now we're going to call it something else. It's not binging. It's Making my making myself healthy by eating you know ten thousand calories or five thousand calories a day or whatever. No, it's just the other side of the coin. It's a very slow process. Take care of yourself, um, and it takes some time. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They cost absolutely nothing. They're all free. You can also find us all on Instagram. You can find me at mindpumpsal. Justin at Mind Pump Justin and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.